Hey everyone, welcome back to the Spots of Love podcast. I am your host, Karan. Um, I'm super excited about doing this podcast. This is the third episode uh, now, and it's been just a lot of fun to talk to to different fans of the Barney community. Um, like I've always said before, this podcast um, is it's in the it's the same sort of as the the one that that existed prior. Um, whereas we talk about Barney and we talk about our love for Barney and the things that inspire us from that show. Um, but it's also different in the idea of us trying new things um, and trying new ways to make it interactive and more fun uh, for you as the viewers. Um, and then also you as the guests when you come on our show. Um, so just keeping in that same vein of excitement, um, there's been a lot that's happened uh, over the last couple, like week or two weeks um, since we filmed the last episode. So I really want to talk uh, to our guest today about some of those things um, and then even just a little bit more. Uh, so I'm super excited to to introduce our guest today, Lucas. Lucas, how are you? I'm doing very well, Karen. Thanks thanks for having me here. It really is a honor. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an honor for me too because, uh, you know, I'm one of the new admins to the history fans, but I've been around the Barney community for a long time and I've always seen your name and you know, you doing your costume performances and things like that, but we've never had actual chances to have a conversation. So I'm super excited to be able to finally speak to you um, about about the purple guy. Um, what What is it that you, so you, we see your costumes in the back. Let's just talk about those for a quick second. What, do right. you have a costume business or what do you do? Um, I wish I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, mostly um, I use them for a couple of, of re I use them for a couple of events. Uh, first off, I sometimes use them for conventions for okay. cos for cosplays. Uh, second, which you probably most know known for, my TikTok videos. I also yes. do TikTok. Over fifteen thousand followers on TikTok as of now. Nice. And third, and most importantly, I do game reviews. I run a YouTube channel called The Fairly Out Gamer. As you can see, I have my wand with me. Nice. From the re yeah. And sometimes, whenever a guest comes in, I always bring in one of these guys in. That's awesome, man. I didn't know that you were the Fairly Odd Gamer either, because I've seen that channel around, but had no idea you were. It was the same, the same person. So that's that's kind of crazy to to put that in that connection in. But that's really Absolutely. that's really cool. Um, uh, let's let's talk about Barney. That's what we're here for. Um, let's talk about. Let's go to the beginning. Do you remember um, when you first came across Barney um, and what that experience was like at all? Okay. Well. Well, first off, I first heard of it back in preschool, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I think there was a they had like a couple of VHS tapes or something. Um, mm -hmm. um, I never grew up watching Barney at all. At first, I thought when I was very young, I thought he terrified me as a kid. Really? Because yes, because I never grew up watching it in my childhood. Never seen the show, but as an adult, I come to know more and more about him which is mm -hmm. kind of ironic because usually you you, you know what you, you know barney as a kid but for yeah. me i know of, i know of him as an adult so it's kind of it's kind of strange the more i think about it yeah what what was it uh do you think back when you were younger that made you kind of scared of the character what was was there certain things about the way the costume looked or the way he sounded or what was it that that scared no. you as a kid? well what scared me was um what scared me, I think, was probably when he come when the doll comes to life. Basically, mm -hmm. that's kind of that's a kind of kind of rubs me the wrong way. I think it's it does oh, sure. terrify me a bit. So, and back when I was a kid, I I, I was used to I was I actually was like most kids or some kids terrified of people dressed in costumes. Even at Disney World, yeah. I was terrified of uh people in costumes which is ironic now because i have some costumes right here <laughs> yeah interesting mm -hmm. um do you think that now that you do costume performing yourself it has um it's it's helped with what that fear was as a child do you think absolutely i feel like um the way most people will overcome their fears is that well usually i used to i think of them as people normal people just doing their jobs because yeah. i'm also an act i'm also an actor i've done stage i've worked with people in costumes before so nice. i know so i know what that's like and i feel like sometimes people overcome their fears by just being in a mascot costume and see mm -hmm. it's try to air because a job my job as a mascot performer 
try to entertain people and make people happy. That's yeah. what I try to do. But there are times in which I unintentionally scare someone. I try to back off and just um, just meet the parent first or just make sure that – or try to distance themselves from the kids so that way they'll feel yeah. – more comfortable it shows you how good that you are as a costume performer though because um i performed as barney's when i was when i was 14 until i was about 23 and then i stopped and then i started again up until 2021 um and then i did other costumes too spider-man black panther those kind of things but it it shows you how well of a costume performer you are because a lot of people don't understand that that if a child is scared or hesitant to come to you you have to just kind of give them that space and give it's more of not you going to them and them coming to you. Right. Right. Um, because right. the more that you try to approach them and if they're if they're nervous about it, you're just you're just traumatizing these kids, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so allowing them the chance to come to you instead of you going to them, that shows right. how how good you are with those costumes and understanding that as a mascot costume performer. So that's that's really awesome. Um what age so you you didn't much watch barney as a kid what age was it when you started to um get into the show and become a fan of the show well that's a that's an interesting question to me because um oh gosh i think i was about um oh gosh this is actually a hard question for me because um i think back when i was like um like young adult some in, in the teenage years Mm -hmm. I guess somewhere around junior high or high school. Um, but after a while, but I think after a while, you can't, it's, you kind of seem to know more and more about it, basically. Yeah. That's interesting. So you, you're right because you kind of had a, uh, a reverse. Um, you kind of came to Barney in reverse. Like you said, most kids, they meet this character as a young child and they, they grow up and they leave it or they grow up and they stay with it like i never i never grew out of barney i'm of i'll be 30 uh 30 in march and i watched barney from the time i was born and i still watch it now with my with my daughters and i'm obviously a huge fan um so it's interesting for to talk to someone like you who was hesitant of the show as a kid and then to mm -hmm. come into it as a teenager which is usually the age when everyone's like oh i'm too i'm too i'm, a, I'm too old for this this kind of stuff right yeah um so be you said before you were kind of nervous uh just because of the, the whole costume thing. What yeah. is it that then what made you a fan then? What when in those teenage years, um, what was it that you noticed with Barney where you said, I actually like this show and this character? Well, I I did come across other shows that had people dressed up in these kind of costumes, and I and I thought, you know, maybe it's Maybe I was a little hesitant at first because I'm okay with because I'm okay with it. There's a show um, I watched on ABC IQ, which I because you know I'm I'm in Tennessee right now. I used to live in Alabama, and okay. um, th there's a show on called Rags or Rags Kids Club Band, which is a band full of dogs playing rock and roll tunes. And I oh. think that and that to me, I think kind of lessened my fear of it. And mm -hmm. also, I don't know if it's a little too early to bring up the terrorist <laughs> moment yet. I'll probably start showcase more, but I've had my Barney doll back in '98 when I was two, um, and even though I was hesitant of the show, I still, I still hold on to this as in like maybe as, as like my, um, I wouldn't say sleep paralysis demon, but it's a way to help lessen my fear of it. Oh sure, yeah, cool. So, um, I try to. <laughs> I, I vowed to avoid most of this conversation uh, in public, but let's just talk about it really quick. Um, how do you feel then? Uh, obviously, there's the news is out now that there is a reboot coming of Barney, um, and it's animated, and so it's not costume anymore, which costume was one thing that made you kind of shy away from it as a, as right. a young kid. Um, but now I've gotten used to it. So now, I'm, now, Yeah, now you're used to it. Do you think that kids out there... Um, do you think this animated route works better now? As if if there's kids out there who maybe were like you, who maybe were scared of that live action costume to have um, it cartoon form, or what do you think? Well, in my opinion, um, it kind of depends on how you look at it. Basically, mm -hmm. um, let's say if you're someone who has no idea about about what Barney is, or or what it is, or what the yeah. past is, 
Uh, maybe it could be a, a, a good trick. Maybe it does look um, pretty good because um, it kind of showcases a new era of Barney. Oh, but sure. for th but for those who are like diehard Barney fans of the original or the original Barney fans, mm -hmm. I've seen people that are sick to death of that new design. I mean, <laughs> yeah. people are. It's kind of mixed. The more I think about, it. there are. I'm kind of in the mixed side of it because um, I know, I know why people don't like the new design because it kind of. Because owned by Mattel, it happened to Bob, Bob the Builder, it happened to Thomas the Tank Engine. Mm -hmm. um, I know people are trying to reboot stuff, and um, sometimes it works, sometimes it does. It doesn't work at all. Yeah. Um, I think all we have is just um, the design, and I don't know more, much about it yet. I want to see actual footage of it, like how he talk, like or how he sounds, okay. how how it's gonna how it's gonna turn out. So I'm kind of in the mix side of things. Gotcha. I mean, I, I mean, finally, I've actually heard that um, Bob West said that as he and interview said he actually likes the new Barney design, which mm -hmm. is which is strange. But um, and he is interested about voicing him again. So I'm if he does voice him again, then that might lessen um 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 the hatred a bit. Yeah. Um, I think the hatred is coming from fans more than anyone. Um, right. what I've seen is a lot of the people who were at least cast or crew, um, cast as far as Bob, who was the voice, but crew, as far as people who work behind the scenes, um, not a lot of people are opposed to the idea of it being animation. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe the design a little bit, but not the animation aspect. So yeah, it, like you said, we, we, we don't have anything as of this recording, we don't have anything that we could base anything off of except for except for the picture. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see to see how that goes as we go through the rest of this year um, and see what new information we get. If you were yeah. if they if if Mattel came to you and said, Lucas, we want you to uh, produce, bring Barney back and produce a brand new show. How would you make that different? Would you would uh, explain if you. Let's say this reboot didn't exist right now. How would you make uh, Barney different to bring it into today's time with the kids that we have today? Well, for me, um, I don't think Barney's ever talked about like um, I love Barney is one of those characters in which they talk about real life situations. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we could bring back the live action Barney, um, but have a talk about um, like like understanding kids about real life situations. Because you know Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, they they cover real life situations, but Barney, they they never do that. But mm -hmm. but trying to not mention it as much while trying to entertain kids, basically. Sure. Do you think that you would need to raise if you were to do something like that with Barney? Do you think the age range would need to be raised? So. Um, I think one of the reasons why Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street back in the in in the day Sesame Street got away with talking about more of those real life situations, death and divorce and those kind of things was because the the target range for those kids were out of the toddler stage and they were right. in ages where they could comprehend more. Whereas Barney is specifically toddler age where they're just learning information. So right. they're not able to comprehend complex details like what is death and those kind of things you can talk right. to them about it but they can't comprehend it so if you did right. that with barney or if they tried to do that with barney do you think that they would need to change who their target range is then well i feel well it kind of depends it kind of depends really because if it if it was going to be something like for toddler if toddlers wouldn't understand it that's that's fine mm -hmm. um have it in a way that i think toddlers would not would understand it but not have it but not have it discussed too much sure yeah no that makes sense because um uh you know i do i have a children's show that's a um that's toddler aged and so um it a lot of people they they uh they um they get in a mindset where they think that young kids like toddlers can't grasp certain details or certain pieces of information right um, right, and so right. they don't provide that to them. So I, I think it's interesting. Um, I, I like, like you said, I think that it can work if you do it in a way that, um, 
is easily digestible for a young child to understand. Um, mm -hmm. And even if they don't fully understand it, they at least get some of the concept. I think you definitely can do it. Uh, you, you just have to be very... Barney's already a creative show, but if you were to change the topic conversations to things like like some like more in depth conversations, you would just have you would have to be very very uh, creative on how you portray that to the child to where they understand it and um, careful and, yeah, and careful. And careful yeah exactly because that could be because again that could be a little risky yeah for sure it's ex it's exciting to to think though because there's so many different ways that Barney can go because Barney has is, has always been that inclusive character right, right. so nothing is out of the ordinary. Uh, to have Barney talk about it, I think it really just comes down to how do you tackle that idea if it's something vastly different than what Barney usually would talk about, and right, how would you right. do that in a way that it it fits for the the demographic of the children um, that you're talking to. So yeah, that's Absolutely. it's kind of interesting. Um, since you're a costume performer, do you have do you have a favorite Barney costume? Um, and I'm talking. Backyard Gang era Barney, or all the way to uh, you know the end. Is there one costume specifically that, or maybe two or three that stick out to you among all the rest that are like the top of the line costumes? You think? Um, for me, I think um, if if you want to talk if you want to talk about Barney costumes, go and watch the Disney Dan video. Which, by the way, I have okay. some of my costumes here. I've actually made appearances in Disney Dan's videos. Oh, cool. Um, uh, excuse me, Doc. Um, Pete, obviously, Pete, and of course, Oogie Boogie. Three of my costumes at the time of recording have appeared in Disney Dance videos, and I'm a nice. and he actually did a video on on Barney, and that actually made me become a patron. But to answer your question, um, um, in terms of Barney costumes itself, I probably say some somewhere around seasons four and five, four four through five of Barney and Friends, because I think that's kind of the version of what. Of what Barney costume that I'm used to. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, mine, mine is a toss up between the 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 typical that everybody likes the the live in New York City Imagination Island costume. Ah, um, nice. but I and I I also love seasons. I like the early season four costume, the one that they use in like Adventure Bus and those kind of things. Right, uh, right. But uh, my my other favorite actually is a season thirteen costume, the very last costume, because it just seems complete. The face, obviously, the face structure is a little different than all the rest of them, um, which mm -hmm. is one of the things that that fans say. But the fact that you have connected ankles and all that, it just seems like a com like Barney had finally came to that completion of what he should right. look like with the connected ankles and that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, those those would be mine. Um, if I, if I had to choose talking about favorite things, do you have, um, a favorite home video or, uh, one that maybe you own or one that maybe you don't own, but that you, you really like above the rest? All right. Well, actually the answer to the other question, the other, another costume I really liked is the, um, um, the day in the park with, uh, Barney costume, the one that, um, the one at universal. I like that one also. Oh yeah. So to answer this question, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but. When I was very young, I used to own a VHS tape of Barney's Great Adventure, mm -hmm. um, the movie on VHS. Yeah. Um, I I used to have that because one thing I remember about it was they actually had um, I don't know if you saw um the Cats trailer um yeah. Cats on video. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but the font they use is literally the Barney font. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, because if you look at because if you look at the trailer on YouTube. It says open your eyes or something like that. that if you look really closely that's literally the same font they use for barney as in the, the as in like the barney logo yeah interesting i'll have to look that up and, and see because i never made that connection so yeah i'll have to do that once we're done with this that, that and, plus, would be cool and plus and plus it was both made by um by polygram yeah true that is true i used to own that movie too and I don't know what happened to it. I used to have it. Um, this here is all my collection of like uh, my take my videotapes that I've had since I was a child. Uh, oh. I used to get each movie when they were first released. So I used to have Great Adventure, and I feel like I do. I just it's probably misplaced right now. Um, uh. 
but yeah, it is. It's a good one. It's one of those ones also that uh, you know fans are kind of mixed mixed on, right? Because uh, right. you know um, it could have been better, but for what it is, it's also a pretty good movie too. Um, so mm-hmm. that's one of those those controversial topics that like a lot of fans they sit on one side or the other of the fence of um, how they feel about that movie. Um, so it's interesting. And I noticed that. Um... There is a bit of sort of there is also Barney has also has some connections of that movie to search of Soleil because not only are some of the uh, background extras are search of Soleil performers, but the choreographer Deborah, but um the choreographer of it Deborah Brown also mm-hmm. search of Soleil choreographer, so that yeah. kind of brings brings a connection and also because it was filmed in um in Canada, so yeah for sure. And Definitely. one thing I know, and one thing I noticed that um you know in in the show um Matt. You know, there's a little effect of the the doll coming to life, that little mm-hmm. sparkle. In the movie, it's just a jump cut. Yeah. Where Trevor Morgan literally opens up the shower curtain and then Barney just pops out of, out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. That, I think, had, it, it kind of frightens you. A, no, kind of kind of frightening, but also not how we see it in the show. Yeah. Because I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure that they didn't have the license to actually use the effect overall. It's about to, it's, it's, it's when you have Barney taking a shower. Yeah, it's a, it. It was an interesting uh, transition to to life from the doll um, when you put him in what is the real world in Great Adventure, right? Um, yeah the 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 decision that they made to have him come to life that way was it was a little different. Um, mm-hmm. I, I wonder if the original script, if it would have been the same sort of transition um, or or where that idea came up, where they they thought that would be a good the, the best idea to to bring him to life. It, it is an interesting trans- transition. I could have seen him come to life more like an imagination island where like mm-hmm. he's just on the bed and he just because even in imagination. Like grows island, up. He, yeah, he it didn't. Like inflates the exactly. Out of the bed. Yeah, he didn't come. He didn't just. Pop burst into life like like he did on even on the, the movie. Oh, he just yeah, he kind of grew. So, um, yeah, it's interesting the way that I, they, they chose to do that. Mm-hmm. I feel like that that would have been a perfect way to introduce Barney rather than just a jump cut. You know? Oh yeah. And also, if you look at it differently, it, it looks like it looks like Barney just infl- it looks like something inflatable. It, something like inflatable he's just blowing in, up. Yeah, blowing <laughs> up. <laughs> Like a giant balloon. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, let's see here. So, uh, with you joining Barney in your in your kind of teenage years, uh, how well do you do you uh know the Barney songs and the lyrics to those songs? Do you think you know them pretty well? Uh, some of them. Uh, some of them. I think when I started doing um, uh, voice uh, when I did voice work when I did the Barney review when I did the Barney review since then. Um, I kind of do my own, my, my own thing, my, my, my Barney voice. Yeah. Uh, and little did I know that, um, when I did, went to the Barney review, I, I was, I didn't want to do the Barney voice initially. I wanted someone else to do it. But when I, when I came to filming, nobody was interested. So I thought I'd do it. So I went ahead and just did my own Barney voice for once. <laughs> nice. How long did it take you to, to, um, to practice that voice to get it to where it is now. Um. So basically, how I did that voice was I tried to do it similar to like Bob West, though a lot of people thought I sounded like Dean Wint um, mm-hmm. when doing that voice. Um. I kind of did it the same way. Um. Like Goofy did. Um. Um. The way Goofy does his voice, he does like his te- his teeth pop it, stick your teeth out with the little with with the little voice, and also kind of flux. And also kind of uh, fluctuating it up and down a little bit, and, and there you go. That's how, I, and that's how I got Barney the Dinosaur. <laughs> nice, yeah. I do. I can. I can hear a little bit of uh, Dean in there. You, your portrayal of it is sort of like a. It, it's it's like this. Uh, I don't want to use the word weird because uh, it's not meaning it in a bad way. You have this kind of healthy mix of of Bob and Dean to where. Um, you it it almost sounds like you've created your own your own Barney voice, but it's reminiscent of those guys. 
You know, it's, it's not like it's not just like, oh, you just sound like Dean Went or you sound like Bob West. You sound like your own version of Barney, but you have those those mannerisms in your voice and those a uh, bit of the sounds of what Bob and what Dean both have given to the character. So that's that's interesting because usually a lot of the fans, which most of them are great, but a lot of them, they're they're either channeling just Bob. Um, not many of them do Dean Went, but it's usually just kind of a, a copying of of Bob's voice, right? Um, right. But you kind of, it seems like you, and I don't know if you did it purposely, but you almost put your own spin to it while using pieces that they've created for the characters. That's that's really cool. I like that. That's the thing, though, because I'm also a voice, because as a voice actor, um, impersonation is part of it, but, you know, a lot of people can come in and just do, like, impersonations of Bob or Dean. Mm -hmm. But the thing, but the most, but acting is the key word to voice acting. Because anyone can just do a voice and just and just do, do it right then yeah. center. But the thing about it is that I, I do bit I, I, I use bits and pieces of it purposely while mm -hmm. trying to do my own spin into it. So, sure. in a way, I kind of do, like, my own version of Barney. Yeah, for sure. So, I like that. Um, I ask you about songs because I have a game. Are you are you interested in playing the game? Oh, oh, oh what game is it? Is it called Name That Tune? <laughs> no, uh, it oh. is not. This one is different. This one is um, it, I uh, what I want you to do is, is to complete the lyrics. So I will I will give you words to a Barney song, and then I want you to see if you can complete the lyrics to that song. Oh, it's kind of like don't forget the lyrics. Oh, so like that TV show, don't forget the lyrics. Yeah, sort of, yeah. We don't have any music or things like that behind us. I'm just going to read the, the lyrics to you. But yeah, it is pretty much like that, where I'll have you just fill in the blank um, after what I have. Gotcha. You know, for it, I have I have four different I have four different ones that we'll do. And it, it's right. pretty quick. Okay, let's go. For the first one, I, I think it's this is perfect because uh, you mentioned Great Adventure. So this is from uh, Barney's Great Adventure, and it's the uh -huh. song... It's the song Imagine, okay? Um, mm -hmm. So I'll give you the lyrics, and then I'll tell you when to finish. Cool? Okay. All right, so here we go. Number one, Imagine. Close your eyes, and you will find there are pictures in your mind. Things that you can see and feel, all those things are very real. Can you finish the lyrics? All I can say... Well, let me think about this for a moment. So it's kind of like, um, would you like? I think I know. I know the last part of it. Something, okay. something, and there you are. You could see most anything. Imagination takes you. This imagination takes you anywhere. Yeah, so I, I know. The, I know the last few. I know the last few part. I don't know anything before then. The first few words is doesn't matter where you are. Make a wish, and there, and you, there are. you are. You yep. can see most anything. Imagination takes you anywhere. Yeah, I I'll give it to you because you got you got most of it. So, um, and we're all winners anyway. So, uh, of course, give, there are no losers. There's yeah, no exactly. room for losers. They, right. <laughs> all <a> right. Queen. <laughs> um, number two. So this one uh is from the popular song "Growing." Okay. All right. Um, each day we grow a little taller. A little bigger, not smaller, and we grow a little friendlier too. Can you finish the lyrics? Oh boy, that I thought this is one I probably should do a TikTok video on because I have not done. That's one video. That's one in which I have. I don't know. I don't know the song to, but I feel like it's oh, something really? I might want to do a TikTok to. Okay, so. so you don't know those lyrics. So the uh, what follows is we try to be a little nicer as we grow each day because we're uh. growing, and so are you. I got got it. How so, well how well do you think you know uh Barney and the Backyard Gang? Okay. Um it there are some that I remember. Um there's there's some that I remember. Um um there's some though. Well, some. Well these lyrics are from the are from the theme song. Do you think you know the theme song enough? I only know Barney and Friends. I don't really know much about Barney and the Backyard Okay. Gang. We'll we'll skip it then. No worries. Yeah. All we'll right. Skip it. Um the very last one is from the song It's Cook a Cold Burr. Okay. Okay. Here we go. When the grass is covered with fluffy white snow, that's how I know it's cold. Can you finish the lyrics? 
When a tree is filled with icicles, that's how I know it's called. There you go. Ding, 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 ding. I need to get sound effects or something so we can <laughs> we can make it more lively here. I um, know that I know this because I did do a TikTok video on that song. Yeah. So I awesome. so I when I did that TikTok video, I I had to do I had to do it at the right time because um if it's snowing or whatnot or if it's raining. Oh sure. That, that could actually work out. And the thing is though, sometimes when it does snow, I can take Barney outside and out in the snow. But when it's raining, leave him indoors. Oh yeah. Which is why I'm actually doing it downstairs in my downstairs area. And um, this is actually, look, believe it or not, this is where I actually do uh, my filming for my Patreon it and oh, my TikTok nice. videos. We're and in the studio. I yeah, I have my little um, outdoor area in which I, in which um, when I do record Barney outside, mm -hmm. this is where I have my little outdoor area for um, when, if I do intend on filming outside. Nice, I love it. All right, now we're at the before we before we end the show here today. We're at the point. Um, and you kind of showed it a little bit already, but every episode we ask the guests to bring on a Barney item that they hold near and dear to them um, and have them share that with us. So can you share uh, what you brought with you today and just kind of explain why you why you chose what you chose? Okay, so obviously the Barney plus I showed before because mm -hmm. obviously um, I'll show you all, all that I have here. Um, so... I have the Barney games that I covered for the Barney review, nice. which to this which to this day is still the most viewed video on my channel so far. Um, if I ever do a Barney part two, I really want to talk about this game. Uh, this is Barney for the V Smile Baby, which is a console okay. that I don't have yet, but I feel like this is something I really want to talk about if I plan to do a a, a part two along with some of the PC games. Nice. Um, I have some of the um, this is also stuff I have very young. Barney and BJ bath toys, I believe. Nice, yeah. I still yeah. have. I, still I have the have. Barney version of those. Oh, cool. Yeah. And um, another plus I have is Riff, the mixed character. Is, yeah. oh, I kind of think of it as the cousin Oliver of the Bar of the <laughs> Barney gang. <laughs> yeah. But here's the. But here's something I really want. Here's something that. But here's the. Here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. This is the Riff plush. Autographed by Michaela Dates, the voice of Riff herself. Wow, that's awesome! Did you? How'd you get that? Did you go to like her con or something? I did actually. Um, that's amazing. So here's a funny story. Um, yes, I've met a couple of Barney people at conventions before. Um, first, when I actually first met Michaela. I first met Michaela at MomoCon in 2016, mm -hmm. back when I had you know these three. Yeah. Um. Is I at this three and then Michaela asked, "Where's Riff?" Oh, of course, yeah. I didn't have I didn't, ha I didn't grow up with Riff at the time. So then in 2019, um, when Michaela came back to Momocon, I thought, you know, she asked me where Riff for us. Maybe I should get a Riff plush to have her sign. And lo and behold, I have the Riff. I brought my Riff plush, got it signed, and I also showed her a photo of. The Barney costume that I have behind you is right behind me. Nice. And this th this is the costume I'm actually the most proud of because um I've had them for a long time. It kickstarted my um uh, um this is the, the, the vi this is the costume from the Barney video that what brought my channel my channel up uh, on the map and also kickstarted my uh my TikTok. When nice. I showed Michaela a photo of my Barney costume with me inside. She said, and I quote, you are a true Barney fan. Nice. That's awesome, man. I'm kind of jealous because I I'm a I'm a fan of Riff. I'm I, I'm a weird Barney fan in the idea that I don't uh I don't align with a lot of like the views that the other Barney fans have. Like I don't completely hate the reboot. I don't completely hate Riff. I don't completely hate right. some of the things that um, that they despise, um, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it it's just because I'm just, I, I've always been open to new things. So the addition of Riff and things like that never bothered me. Maybe the way that they tackled the idea of the character and they could have done more for him and made him more right. of a character that stood out on his own. Um, but that's really cool, and it's cool that you got that Riff doll too because th that's one of the rarest things. For Barney because they didn't do much riff. I have that doll upstairs. Um, and I also have 
I have two of like these little little bitty riffs. It's it's it's, it's and now riffs is saying I shall call him Mini Me. Yeah. So I have two of these, but that's all that I, you know, aside from aside from videos, that's all that I own with riff. Um, and so finding that doll is usually the the hardest thing to do. So it's really cool that you got that and and the signature on it. And also, I'm not done yet because I've met a couple more Barney guests nice. um, over the years. Um, first off, I did says first off, I did meet one of Barney's two performers, Josh Martin, who um, awesome. who, who, who performed to Barney. Actually, I I initially knew of him because he voiced Majin Buu in Dragon Ball Z. But yeah. when I read that he performed to Barney, I was like. Oh, I did not know that. So maybe I should bring in my Barney dolls as well. Mm -hmm. um, j and last year at a convention called Smoky Mountain Fan Fest, Todd Habercorn, Mr. Yeah, Knickerbocker himself, I got to meet him. I showed him my Barney costume, and he said that next time, next time I meet him, if I do bring the Barney costume, he and I, he and I should do Mr. Knickerbocker. I I oh, yeah. Marty do Mr. Knickerbocker with Mr. Knickerbocker. <laughs> that'd be cool, yeah. That that would be that'll definitely be a video for TikTok. That thing will, I'm sure will blow up. That that's awesome. Well, um, I thank you for coming on the on the podcast today, my friend. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. Is there anything else that we didn't get to mention that you really want to mention before we end this? Yes. Um, in addition to um, like you say, I'm a mascot performer. I'm also Part of, I'm a, I'm one of the co-hosts of a of a podcast myself called the Mascot Support Group podcast, in which we're basically a mascot and entertainment podcast. Um, yeah. We've had we've had Ken Scott, um, Michael who, who played Michelangelo in mm -hmm. the Teenage Mutant Ninja live action '90s movies. Um, well, oh gosh, um, we had. Um, Okay, um, one of the guests we had earlier, which is really funny, um, um, Oscar, who was a, uh, a who, who was a circus clown for Ringling Brothers, um, was also the handler for uh, Houston Astros. Yes, when they won the World Series, I'm a Braves fan. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think um, I am very honored to be part of the pot of that podcast, and mm -hmm. um. I also have a, a section in the podcast in which I talk about the Mass Singer. I'm I'm one. Okay. Of, I'm a huge, I'm a Mass Singer fan. I was on the yeah. show as a virtual audience member. Nice. Um, yes, it, it, it was awesome. And um, I also have Hangout with Chaz and Hux, which is a weekly um, Instagram live stream every mm -hmm. Friday night um, at around 8 p.m. Eastern time. Cool. Um, this is where we just hang out with Chaz and Hux. We talk about whatever it is we we did not talk about on the podcast. We just talk about it as a, as like an extra feature. Awesome, wonderful. Well, yeah, definitely everybody check those things out. Uh, support our friend Lucas and all that he does. Follow his TikTok and all of those great things. Um, thank you again, Lucas, for coming on the podcast. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. To all the fans out there, I am looking for people. Uh, who make music so if you make your own versions of barney music that we can feature here on the on the show i'm looking for you to to uh submit that to me um we'll give you a shout out we'll put you we'll put the music in and we just love to hear from your from your creative side uh so thank you so much that has been this episode for today uh i hope to see you next time on the spots of love bye and remember i love you Mwah.